Good morning. Welcome to St. Augustine Church in the Catholic community of Pleasanton. Thank you for celebrating with us this morning. Let's take a few moments and warm up our voices by going over the psalm. We have Psalm 45, the queen stands at your right hand. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. One more time. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed Thank you. And now we turn to Father Mark. Good morning. Good morning, Dick. Thank you. Good morning, church. Morning. Happy Solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary into Heaven. And also with you. Thank you. <laughs> it's not exactly a hallmark greeting that rolls off your tongue. I just want to take a moment this morning to first welcome all of you who are joining us on our live webcast, whether on Facebook or YouTube. We're so happy you're with us on this very holy and joyful day. As I say, it really is a celebratory day in our faith this holy day, normally a holy day of obligation, it's on a Sunday this week, um, because we celebrate that one of our race made it, body and soul, into heaven. And that's something so wonderful for us and such a great example for us. If you are joining us online for the very first time, I'm Father Mark Wiesner, pastor here in the Catholic Community of Pleasanton. Uh, we've provided some links for you to help you with your worship with us today, remotely, wherever you may be, uh, either on Facebook or on YouTube. Actually, last week, while I was on vacation, I watched this Mass on YouTube and saw all of you and prayed with you and discovered that if you watch on YouTube, if you click the Read More link, which should be like right about here, um, that's where you will find a link to the readings for today, for our music today, and also a link where you can support the ministries of the parish if you're stay financially stable and would like to do that. On Facebook, I believe those links are above me here. But please take a moment to find those while I address those who are here with us in person. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, I've been sharing with the other Masses that I think it's so wonderful and important that we be together to pray today, not only on this Feast of the Assumption, but also because as if you're paying any attention at all, you know the world is really hurting right now. I mean, beyond the arguments we're having each other about face masks or not face masks or vaccinations or not vaccinations, uh, Haiti had a tremendous earthquake, right? More than 300 people dead, as far as we know to this point. I saw where in Japan, two million people have been warned, two million people have been warned to get ready to evacuate because they're expecting such torrential rains. There's the forest fires in Oregon and California, in Greece, there's flooding in Turkey where people have died. There's what's happened in Afghanistan. Just all over the world, people are hurting so much. And it's good that we're together today on this beautiful day to pray for our world and all those in need. Um, when you came in, we invite you to please take a name tag. Uh, as we did the previous month and the month before that, this is just a way for us to try to get to know each other again. There are people who are still returning to Mass who haven't been since Shelter in Place started. Um, and as we sit here to pray together today, there's probably people who you recognize but you don't know their name or people you haven't seen in 15 to 18 months who are here with us today to pray. So I want to give you in just a moment a chance to reacquaint yourself with someone or meet someone who you don't know, introduce yourself, and find out from each other one thing that you can keep in prayer for each other during this time. Um, that way when we get to, you know, we're praying for the intentions of the people of the Catholic Community of Pleasanton, we have some sense of what those are. Um, so it doesn't have to be anything too deep or personal. Don't go pushing for information. But, uh, but you know, I have a family member who's sick or a friend who recently passed away or whatever it may be that you're holding in prayer today. So a couple minutes to meet someone or get reacquainted with someone who you don't know and find out if there's something you can hold in prayer for each other during Mass. Ready, set, go.
Another 30 seconds for that. Thank you very much. Good morning. Aloha. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Just one other note about the liturgy today. You may have found in your packet of envelopes two envelopes for today. The way that works is that the envelope company automatically generates envelopes for every single Sunday of the year, so you have your Sunday envelope. And then the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary is a holy day of obligation. So no matter where it falls in the year or in the week, it's always a holy day, and they generate an envelope for the holy day as well. Since the holy day fell on the Sunday, you ended up with two envelopes for today. So there's not two collections. There's just the two envelopes. If you brought those both with you, please put them both in the first collection. I'd like to remind you, please make sure your phone is on silent or off as we begin our liturgy. And let us take a moment to quiet our hearts and our minds. Remember, in the holy presence of God, and we'll begin our prayer in just a few moments. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the love of God, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we gather on this solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary into heaven to celebrate the great grace that God offers us, the invitation to join her forever in the heavenly kingdom with all the saints. As we begin our prayer this day, let us call to mind our sinfulness, that which would keep us from heaven, and seek God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners to yourself. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of God and intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, joyful day. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul into heavenly glory, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened, and the Ark of His Covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth, to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son a male child destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have salvation and power come, and the kingdom our God and the authority of his anointed one. The word of the Lord.
queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. The daughters of kings are those whom you favor. On your right stands the queen in gold of Ophir. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. Listen, O oh daughter, pay heed and give ear. Forget your own people and your father's house. The queen stands. At your right hand, arrayed in gold. So will the king desire your beauty. He is your lord, pay homage to him. The queen stands at your right hand. They are escorted amid gladness and joy. They pass within the palace of the king. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he subjected everything under his feet. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to help of his servant Israel for he has remembered this, his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and to his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. My sisters, my brothers, the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. My wife and I recently visited the St. Augustine Cemetery to select our plots. While I've been there many times before, this particular time I was struck by the sheer number of gravestones that barely concealed the profound mystery of all of these lives who have been devoted to the service of the church and the community going back well over a century. With ears attuned to this rich history, we might still hear the voices of these parishioners, women, men, and children, an immense choir singing God's praise, or serving us in some liturgical ministry, or in countless faith formation classrooms instructing our young, or in ministries with the poor, comforting the sick and the incarcerated and advocating on their behalf. It is a place of memory, but also of promise. A dormitory where the dreams and promises of these people are not buried in the past, but a living grace being paid forward into the present. Because God is faithful, every life held here in the earth of Pleasanton is a seed sown towards future harvests, multiplying each personal love story a hundredfold. The origins of the church's belief in the assumption of Mary into heaven, defined as a, do as a dogma by Pope Pius XII in 1950, go back to the early traditions in both the East and the West that Mary's natural death was in fact a falling asleep, a dormition, followed not by burial, but by bodily assumption, 
the completion of her earthly journey into heaven. Mary's resurrected state as the mother of God, the mother of Jesus, is assigned to the whole church of her final destiny, of the final destiny of all of the faithful. She possesses the fullness of life promised to those now sleeping in the dormitory at our cemetery and to the whole human community at the end of time. The significance of the church's declaration of the solemnity of the Assumption of Mary in 1950 wasn't lost on a world lost, exhausted by world war and the deaths of over 50 million human beings. At a moment in history when the value of human life had been so subjected to mindless brutality and destruction, Mary, an obscure first century Palestinian woman, is held up as the epitome of human existence and purpose. Her simple trust in God magnified her brief life into universal, even cosmic significance. Her destiny is declared as the dignity of every human person, especially the poor of every age who have been discounted by history, swept aside by the rich and the powerful. In the gospel assigned to this solemnity, Mary proclaims the ultimate lifting up of the poor and pulling down of the mighty that will signal God's justice. She leads a chorus of all the women and children victimized throughout history. Every mother who has lost a child to war, every woman sexually abused or excluded by prejudice from full participation in the decision-making councils in every community. My sisters, my brothers, this is no silent, passive Mary, pedestaled for devotion, projected safely above the common lot of all women, wives, mothers, and mentors who face the daily struggle to clothe, to feed, and protect the most vulnerable in every village, every town, and every neighborhood in the world. This is Mary of Nazareth, wife of Joseph the carpenter, mother of Jesus, that radical teacher who was hunted down and rejected by his own faith community, tortured and executed by the state for sedition. His resurrection guaranteed her own assumption. She is now held up as the model disciple, the very image of the church, mother to us all. We are urged to celebrate this solemnity, to celebrate it liturgically, but even more, to live the life of Mary each and every day of our lives, serving each other, serving the church, serving our community, just as our predecessors in the dormitory at our cemetery just down the road have done for more than a century. At this time, I invite forward those who are preparing for full initiation to the church through the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist to come forward. My dear brother and sisters, we send you forth this day to reflect more deeply upon the mystery of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary and the readings you have heard proclaimed. As you go forth, know that our prayers go with you, and we eagerly await the day when you will join us in full communion around the altar of the Lord. Go now in peace.
please rise, and together let us profess our common faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Mary's prophetic song rings through the ages, echoing God's promise for now and eternity. In union with her joyful confidence, let us pray for our church, for our community, and for the world. For the church whose future glory is prefigured in the Virgin Mary, that like her may God's people magnify the Lord and bear Christ to the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this world that longs to be free from war, terrorism, pandemic, and death, may Christ put all these enemies under his feet and far from our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who assist expectant mothers in need, as Mary assisted Elizabeth, may they inspire us all to mutual charity and make our hearts leap for joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those prayers that we hold in silence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for those throughout the world who are in need of help and assistance, for those in Haiti, in Japan, in Turkey, in Greece, in Afghanistan, those in our own country who struggle with wildfires and floods, for those who are ill, suffering from the many COVID variants, suffering from chronic illness, natural disasters, and for all who seek to bring hope and healing to those in such great need, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for all our faithful departed who await the great resurrection. We pray for those who have died alone or without anyone to pray for them. That all will be welcomed to the loving arms of our Savior. And that all who mourn loss will find strength in our faith in the risen Lord Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for the intentions of all the people of the Catholic community of Pleasanton especially those we shared with one another at the beginning of our Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. God of promise and hope, with Mary and Elizabeth, we recognize your presence in our midst. Hear us as we pray, confident that your mercy is for every generation and for all eternity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts aflame with the fire of love constantly long for you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today, the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your church's coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Yeah. I'm going to bring it out. Yeah, I'm going to bring it out. Lamb of God, you take on sins of the world have mercy 
mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I invite you now to join me with those at home in praying our act of spiritual communion. I will lead and invite you to simply repeat after me. My Jesus, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. Come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. I embrace you as if you were already there. And unite myself wholly to you. And unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
Jesus, formed in your faith, Ave Maria, Alleluia. Jesus, born in your life, Ave Maria, Alleluia.
Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And please be seated for just a couple of moments. A few announcements for you today. The first is, I understand that while I was away, some of you got messages from me, or didn't. Apparently there was another phishing scam that went out over the last week purportedly from me, whether in text message or an email, asking you to set up a meeting with me or send me gift cards or whatever that was. That was not me. I'm sorry, those of you who know me know that I despise meetings. I would never ask to set extra ones up. That wouldn't happen. <laughs> and, uh, and in all honesty, I've got family and friends nearby that if I was in trouble, I'd go to them first, probably. So um, I'm so sorry if that caused any confusion for you, any concern for you. If you ever do hear from me, it will be through email. It will be my father, Mark, at catholicsofpleasant.org email. No other email ever. And, um, and just, just thank you for your caution that. I'm sorry for the confusion. I was telling people after the last Mass that there was one time that someone actually sent me what they received from the scammers. So I created a fake email account and engaged in them, kind of trolled them for a while. I figured if they were busy with me, they wouldn't be bothering anybody else. It was really interesting and a lot of fun until I got too extreme, about 15 emails in and they figured out I was not being serious, but you know, what are you going to do? There's that. Uh, so thank you, thank you, thank you for not responding to those things. If you're an adult who has not received baptism, confirmation, or Eucharist, we have a program, a ministry in the parish that will help you prepare for that. The, the folks that we dismissed in the middle of, of the liturgy who went out to reflect more deeply upon those scriptures today are preparing to receive those sacraments, one or more of them, at the Great Vigil of Easter. Um, the RCIA program, which is Rite of Christian Nation for Adults, is a no-pressure kind of program. Uh, you can enter or leave at any point you choose to. It's very unique to each and every individual, but it is a journey towards those great sacraments of initiation. So if you're an adult who has not received all those sacraments and are thinking about maybe receiving them, please reach out to Matt Gray in our office. That's Matt Gray. And um, he can speak with you about the process, about RCIA, what it might take to receive those sacraments. So we'd love to uh, have you do that. I always tell people who like to come to our church who aren't Catholic, it's very cool to hang out with Catholics. It's even more cool to be one. So take a look at that. If you missed in-person registration for our faith formation classes for children, that was last week, it's not too late to enroll your children in faith formation classes for the coming year. Simply call the faith formation office. They'll be very happy to assist you in that. As always, we encourage you to check out our parish website. You can just Google Catholics of Pleasanton or CorthusCastPleasant.org. I'll keep you updated on everything that's going on, everything that's happening. Also, just a reminder to you that the green worship aids you're using today, when you exit today, please take those with you, deposit them in recycling. We have different worship aids for the next Mass coming up at noon. Again, to all of you who are here with us, whether virtually or in person, we thank you for your presence. It really does... We're, we're just aware that our prayer is enriched for every member of the body of Christ who joins us. So thank you for being here. And please know that you're always welcome here at the Catholic Communion Pleasanton. And the Lord is with you. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you, who have devoutly gathered on this day, carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. And may the blessed Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. For just a second, I forgot to mention, through the generosity of the Knights of Columbus, there is donuts and coffee outside, a chance for us to continue to gather as community. As Father Dan used to say, this is not a donut giveaway program. <laughs> it is a chance to build community. So please, stay, enjoy some refreshments and fellowship with each other on this joyful day. Your Mass is ended. Let us go forth in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Immaculate Mary, your praise.
praises we sing. You reign now in heaven with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave Maria. In heaven the blessed your glory proclaim on earth we your children invoke your fair name ave 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 maria ave ave maria we pray for church upon earth and bless holy mary the land of our birth ave 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 maria ave ave maria Thank you.